Missile tracking, missile tracking. Go tracking. on, go on, tracking. get a raptor. Get a raptor. And dead. Oh, I nope. missed in the last missed. second. Wow, I was so excited yep, about that. Died. I knocked my tea over. Sweet. Hello, valued viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. Just a warning today, viewers. Today we're looking at the concept of nuclear war or nuclear strikes. But don't worry, we won't be firing or using any nuclear weapons today. What we're more interested in is the mechanism by which orders can be communicated by US forces if there were a nuclear strike. So, I figured today, first thing, I would read out the viewer request from Hanrock Abrand95. Hey, Cap, I have a mission idea for you. Sandbox dropped a video today about a C-130 in a Takamo role. Pretend the worst has happened. Nuclear war has broken out. Low frequency radio stations were destroyed and the only way to order a nuclear response from US submarines is to fly a Hercules in low and slow. Orbit above the sea with miles of antenna hanging out the back for prolonged periods of time. Say a spy learned the rough location and so bombers and interceptors from hostile nations were dispatched to prevent the message ever being passed on to the submarine. Now US fighters have to intercept the intercept or all is lost. Well that sounds perfect for Grim Reapers. First we need to talk a bit about Takamo viewers. A basic wiki description is it's a US military system of survivable communication links designed to be used in nuclear warfare to maintain communications between the decision makers, the National Command Authority, and the triad of strategic nuclear weapon delivery systems. Its primary mission is serving as signals relay where it receives orders from a command plane then verifies and retransmits their emergency action messages or EAMs to US strategic forces. As it is a dedicated communications post, it features the ability to communicate on virtually every radio frequency band, very low frequency up to super high frequency, using a variety of modulations, encryptions and networks, minimizing the likelihood an emergency message will be jammed by the enemy. This airborne communications capability largely replaced the older land-based extremely low frequency broadcast sites which became vulnerable to nuclear strike. So today, guys, we're going to see that in action. Here is our scenario. In our scenario, a first nuclear strike has been performed by Russia, obviously causing huge damage to the US mainland, but we won't dwell on that. All we need to know is that the traditional methods of communication are down. Satellite communication is down. ELF is down. So we now need to implement Takamo to ensure a counter-strike. We are in Hawaii here. This is not Guam today. This is Hawaii. Our part of the nuclear response is one Ohio-class SSBN carrying multiple Trident II ballistic missiles. The submarine is loitering 200 miles northwest of Hawaii. What a strange place for it to be loitering, you may think. Well, in my role play, the reason it's here is because first, it's just within strike range of Moscow or Moscow, 6,930 miles. The maximum range of the Trident II is about 7,500 miles. But also, it stays within 200 miles of Hawaii, where Takamo aircraft can be made available to transmit messages to it. And of course, there's fighter cover available there. So the first thing we're going to do, guys, is launch a U.S. Navy Takamo EC-130Q aircraft from this airbase in Hawaii. He's going to take off and he's going to receive fire orders from a master aircraft closer to the U.S. mainland. He's then going to take that message physically 200 miles to the known area of the submarine. Once he gets there, he has to stay in this 10-mile diameter zone with a five mile metal aerial hanging out the back of his aircraft at which point he will transmit on various frequencies to the submarine. If he does that successfully for three minutes then we'll consider fire orders have been passed to the submarine and the submarine can launch its missiles. Of course the submarine needs these fire orders before it can fire its tridents. Now as long as there's no hostile aircraft to intercept the Hercules uh, that's all we need to do but very unfortunately a very nasty spot of bad luck has put the Russians only carrier strike group 200 miles northwest of the submarine point. What are the chances that that group will be there at this time? Pretty much zero, but I need to make 
an exciting mission for my pilot. So the Russian carrier group will obviously detect the C-130, so they need protecting. And therefore, we have a small squadron of F-22s at Hickam Air Force Base on Hawaii on alert, ready to protect the C-130. There will be today eight flown by AI and six by human. So that is a total of 14. The AI, of which there are eight, will be max skill level F-22, carrying their usual load of six AIM-120D3 missiles and two Sidewinder X. The human players will also have the same loadout total, 14. You guys protect the Takamo C-130 at all costs. We have a E-3 AWACS orbit in the theater we also have a couple of Arleigh destroyers close to Hawaii but probably too far away to be of service today and the hostile group consists of one CV two FFGs one CCG and one ASWFF so we have the Kuznetsov here I have no idea if it's sailing at the moment but let's pretend it is on board her are her max possible complement of 24 SU 33 AMs set to ace skill level you guys may complain about that but we want to make it as difficult as possible jammer pods uh, six. Oh, I've made an error there, guys. I put five instead of six. Well, you know what? I'm not going to set all 24 planes out again. So five, as it happens, are 77-1s plus a couple of modernized archers. We've got a couple of Gorshkov uh, frigates here. We've also got one of their remaining Slava-class cruisers here. And we've got a ASWFF at the back there. And that's it, guys. A pretty simple mission. To reiterate, we start. We fly the Takamo C-130 to this ring here where we pass orders onto the submarine. The Raptors protect us from the Russian carrier group. And that's it. I've done a bit of practice and got mixed results. But predictions, how do you think it's going to go? I think if the uh, F-22s fly smart and keep their nose cold until they're actually engaged, uh, we could keep those Su-33s off the C-130. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, it sounds about right. Welcome in viewers, today's Raptor pilots are Fire, Push, Grump, Sabre, Cannonball. Hello boys. Hello, Hello boys. boys. Hello. Right guys, we're going to wait for Sword Flight to go up. Raptors, we're going to follow them up and my boys are behind me. Uh, I've got a silver plane today. Now the real Takamo planes, I believe, are painted white. And I thought that was for styling, but the boys tell me it's anti-flash. So does that mean like anti-nuclear flash, guys? Yeah, it's a. It's not fully uh, anti-flash, as you might say, but it's, it does provide protection. Why does it have to be in a Herc, guys? Uh, viewers, why can't it be in a faster, better response aircraft? My understanding is you need the ability to transmit a very high wattages, a red 200 kilowatts, which is an awful lot of watts. So you need ma you need massive radio hardware. Aren't they doing it with the uh, jets now? Uh, yes, they do, but they, they started off with this aircraft, uh, uh, I think it was a KC-130, now it's moved to a more modern chair, but I think this aircraft, uh, the C-130, can still do it. But those Raptors aren't in a hurry, are they? It's not as if there's a massive nuclear war on. Yeah, you got to follow procedures. Yeah. Hi, right, boys. Oscar Mike. guys I've weighed your raptors down like the clappers they're really heavy today with fuel all right sword flight it's pretty much up her punching it right to left crosswind I can hear you guys behind me I do not like it. You're Ever. rearing to go, Cap. Yes, you are. You are rearing to go. And right pull, initial vector 320. There's my Raptors. Hello, boys. Don't hit each other. On vector. I'm going to stay low because I'm going to keep myself as un. Uh, Findable as possible. You guys feel free to operate above the weather. Do whatever you 
want to do. Autopilot on. Wow, that's dark. Altitude, heading. All right, autopilot is on. Now the boys following me slow. Silly boys. We're falling out of the sky. Not really. Haha, <laughs> look at us. We're big Hercules. Yes, you are. You are big Hercules, Grump. All right, viewers, the reason I'm the Hercules today is because I get to go ping and look at the map for you. So what have we got today? We've got the uh, Russians taking off and coming to get us. Oh, snowing, Grom. Snowing? Mm-hmm. Are you sure that's snow and not just... No, it is in the Russian... Ashes of our enemy. It is 400 miles away. Uh, right, refitted Kuznetsov with her refitted SU-33s. Doing stuff. Oh, look at those flaps. Uh, we don't have a Ohio submarine, so today we have a generic submarine. Old submarine. Uh, Raptors, 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 where are you? Right, so Springfield flight, which I'm calling sword flight today, are after burning up to altitude. We have to be, everyone has to be careful of fuel today. Well, not me and the Herc, but everyone else does. No one has enough fuel to afterburn all the way from here to the fight zone. It's simply not possible. So I've tried to program the AI to be as fuel sensitive as possible. So we'll see how that, yeah, there you see. After it's modulating afterburn on and off. Good AI. Sword flight up at nearly 20,000 feet. Cruising. Wow, one of you's done mega climb. It is fab. Cannonball's done mega climb. I'm in the super 700 feet at my max speed of 290 IAS or CAS, and I've still got a boy with me. Hello. Bye. Bye, Poosh. Good luck. Do things, shoot down Russians and such. We have Overlord here, operating from Hawaii, giving us our AEW. He is vulnerable to the Russians, but he's biased towards our side, so we should be okay. Uh, that's it, second AI flight, Uzi flight, airborne. And that is all of our Raptors today, of which there are uh, 14? 14. Check the flankers. Like the Raptors, they do not have enough fuel on board to afterburn all the way to the target area viewers, so they'll have to be smart with what they do. Raptors up at 30,000 feet at 664 knots ground speed, so uh, I think that's Super Cruise. It is Super Cruise! One benefit Raptor has today over the Sukhois is that it can supercruise, go supersonic without using its afterburner. Sukhoi, not so much. We have a couple of destroyers back here just in case things get really tasty viewers, but I doubt they're going to do much today. Distance between forward flights in naval miles of 214 miles. Still no one afterburning yet. Raptors at 800 knots, mark 1.4 I think. Without their afterburners on. Sukhois um, mark 0 0.9 without their afterburners on, so. Uzi flight mixed in with me somewhere. I kind of see you. I just got sonic, sonic boomed by a raptor. Raptor was at a wow, Mark 1.5 Super Cruise now. Oh, that's impressive. Sukhois are now after burning. They've made that calculation about when they can safely turn their afterburners on and not run out of fuel. Okay, we have three. Can't go south. I'm not cannibal. 
check the Russian carrier group, make sure nothing's gummed up or gone weird. We usually don't have problems with the Russian carrier. Looks good. You even have the uh, Hawaiian liveries on these planes. Do I? That's yeah, look at the top of the tail flash, it says Hawaii. Right. Right, well, I'm going to take credit for that. I definitely knew I did that. 100%. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright, the sword light still Mark 1.5, Sukhois. Ooh, Mark 1.6. How do they know where the raptors are? They don't, viewers. They can't actually see the raptors. They just sort of know something's out there. They know the C 130s out there. They know the AWACS is out there. They'll only see or only be able to get a fire grade solution on the raptors at about 20 miles, maybe even less. It, Kind of depends on various parameters. Whereas the, Rap yeah. Whereas the Raptors will be able to fire, I don't know, a long way away. Distance between fronts, 100 miles. Right, Raptors are going full bore now. Put the Raptor burners on. Oh, they're a massive, they're a Mark II. Wow, that went quick. Missile out. First, yeah. You know, boom, boom. Fired at about 90 miles, and it is an aim on 20 d 3 Max range, well over 100 miles. Very impressive missile. 1.2 million dollars each. An old school GR battle, 80 miles between fronts. Fires moving in right flank with Sabre, uh, Grumps moving left flank with Cannonball and Push. And I'm in the rear with the frigging gear. We're using the lofting variant today, viewers. They will loft up to about 100,000 feet. We have two variants, lofting and non-lofting, and depending on the scenario, uh, it suits we move between the two types. Distance between fronts of 50 miles. First missile diving down from 90,000 feet. Uh, here we go, viewers. What are those two coils going to do? Well, they're certainly moving very fast, but remember, they can't see the Raptors yet on their radars. Well, they certainly can't get a track. All right. Going defensive. Oh, defending now. Yes, he is, from 100%. I need to defend enough. Is missile it going to save him? It's Mark 2.5. Missile is Mark 2. One Sukhoi down. Sorry about the scoreboard viewers. It's reading as an A10 for some reason, but I just haven't had time to deal with it. It's a Sukhoi. Seven missiles in the air. Probably all at different targets. Could this be a cakewalk? You never really know. One of those. Oh, another one down. No, it's not. Yes, he is. Until you run it, it could go either way. It's always been the same. But this is looking decisively in the American favour right now. America. Indeed, Grum. Indeed. Another one. Wow. Three connections out of three missiles. That is amazingly good. Sea flankers are how old? Very. Oh, these are the original 1988 models, I think. Yeah. But they're modernized. They're DM, so they're modernized, but still. They just can't beat the missiles. Anything against that 1995 technology. Yeah, they just can't quite outrun the missiles. Okay, one survived. Oh dear. But he, can he get in firing range of a raptor? He's within firing range of a raptor now. He's trying to get a uh, shooting solution, viewers, and then he will bang one off. But he's just been hit by a missile. He's just been intercepted by a missile. So he's not going to get his shot off, and that's very much a him problem. Remember, all skill levels set the same, and all orders set the same today, viewers. Simple case of superior tech today. Wow, sword flight has just steamrolled it over. 11 missiles, 8 kills, what the hell? Like I said, viewers, you never know how these things are going to go. I've run them a few times just to make sure everything works. And sometimes you get one result, sometimes you get a completely different result. Today, it is 100% favouring the blue. This is a real long shot. This is a 110 miler. It's going to space. 70,000 feet, 80,000 feet. Sukhoi down there who's been targeted, I think, by a different missile. Wowie, I'm not even sure we're going to lose any Raptors today, guys, but we'll see. Right, sword flight is still doing sword things. Wow, this missile went over 100,000 feet. That's, of course, of how these missiles get such long range. They can go so high and guide so intelligently. Nine Sukhois down. Missile guiding beautifully. Mark three, mark two and a half, bang. Banged him one. And another. Get banged. And another. Wow, this is... 
Really has been a cakewalk, guys. I'm not even sure my humans are even going to get a shot in here, but... I'm just staying back looking for leakers, but I'm not sure there's going to be any leakers. Uh, oh, well. So, that's how it goes sometimes, guys. At this rate, the, the uh, first flight's going to push them all the way back to their carrier. Yep. Yep. I've run it sometimes, and the first flight goes completely wiped. Weird, isn't it? Well, they have the confidence of the Grim Reapers now with them. Yeah, that's what probably did it, Grump. That word that you said. Lots of pressure. Hmm. Maybe the AI's been practicing on Stoneburner. You know what? I completely forgot. Uh, one of our friends made us some lovely Raptor liveries that I meant to use. I completely forgot. I apologize for that. It's always Oops. something I forget, isn't it? Always something. Oh, finally, the Russians have fired a missile. Can it get a Raptor? I'm at that weird point where I actually start supporting the Russians because it's gotten so one-sided. Go on, Adder. Go on, Adder. It's tracking. It's tracking a Raptor. Come on, do and some it's damage. Not anymore. And it's missed. Unbelievable. Stealth, stealth. It's very hard fighting Raptor viewers, as you, I'm sure you all know. I don't need to tell anyone. Obviously, it's because of the stealth and kinematic ability. It's basically everything. Well, they tried. Two missiles out, and both have failed. I guess eventually Sword Flight could run out of ammo. I mean, that might happen, right? Basically, mm -hmm. push them to their carrier, so. We have Hostu Russia, 0.8 billion with a Bravo. Hostu America, basically nothing. 18 million. I could pretty much afford that, viewers. It's a joke, by the way. I was about to say, you can, huh? All those demonetization issues I'm getting at the moment, Grump. Not so much. Everybody's like, hey, I got a lawsuit with his name on it. Yep. I want that money. Yeah, we've got there, haven't we? Bang. That's what happens to you when you hit the big time. Yeah, that's my problem. Everybody goes after you. Uh-huh. Ooh, next, next missile. I saw that drop from the bay. Mm-hmm. I think I might have to pay, Grump. Wow, yeah, that thing, and then that thing just lofts. That's it's nice. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. Got lofting missiles now. I should thank Dark. Uh, obviously, these are CH mod viewers, um, and with Dark also helps a little bit. I don't want to get in trouble, so that's all I'll say. Well, if nothing else, this is the first time I've gone Mach 2 without a burner. That is worryingly impressive. Worryingly yeah. impressive, guys. Wow. This is what we in the trade call a whitewash viewers and demonetized. Uh, because the Russians just can't fly back. Oh, American got missiles are working so well. Could we see a raptor down here? Maybe we'll get a random... One of the raptor pilots will have a heart attack or something and lose his plane. Missile tracking, missile tracking. Go on, go on tracking. get a raptor. Get a raptor. And dead. Oh, I nope. missed in the last missed. second. Wow, I was so yep, excited about that. I knocked my tea over. Sweet. Oof. Yeah. Another missile's out. Five, miss four missiles out. They're, they are doing something. And, of course, it's lost track. Huh, how about that, viewers? All RCS is set to realistic, viewers. Uh, the Raptors are at 0 0.000. That's three zeros and a one meter squared, which apparently is, the, is what they are at, or the best public knowledge that we have. It may be wrong, I don't know. Uh, and the uh, those old flankers are set five square meters. So we just punch the numbers in, viewers. Finally, a Sukhoi has evaded a missile. I'm smooth. Oh. Yes, it did. It did evade the missile, bro. Yep. Wow. Yep, yep. Okay. Ain't gonna avoid that one, though. Ain't gonna avoid that one, though, is he? Oh, dear. As my baby was started saying, which sounds really funny. Oh, he's dodged it again! Friggin'! He dodged it. Oh. Um, you know when I said he dodged it? I lied! Oh. Yeah. Right. Springfield moving away before the ships shoot him. Um, probably what is gonna be the last Sukhoi is taking off. Yeah, we know it's how it's gonna happen, Cap. There's a there's a reason why the ships wouldn't be shooting at the planes. It's because they have to shut off the radars in order to have their comms to work. They can only do comms, or they can do radar. They can't do both. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Russia. Welcome to the Moskva. Finally, they've been beaten. Uh, the Raptors have been beaten. They've run out of fuel. No, he's not. Yes, he is. I don't know. I mean, it's just turned around at the last minute, so I'm guessing he's run out of fuel. But we'll see. yes, they're turning around. They've run out of fuel. Well, there is a way of beating them. 17 are down out of how many? 24. Uh, there's still seven coming at you, like Cleopatra. Uh, right, where am I after Cannonball, this? Fox 3. A human fired a missile! Yep. Where is it? Fox 3 it? as well. Yes, you did. You are not lying. You fired that missile. Boff. Right, now, is it a friend? I guess is the next question. No, it's not. Okay. We can't even pick up our friends on the radar. Yep. Oh, they're just shooting down the guys as they take off. Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you, though? Not really, Grum. Not really. Oh. Merge. Doesn't even, doesn't, didn't even see him. 
All right, don't you run into uh, the missiles? The missiles certainly see them. Yes, they do. Right, look, uh, Cannibal's original missile from 100 miles away is bopping in. That's kind of impressive, viewers. 25 American missiles fired, four Russian missiles fired. Cap, you're still, oh geez, you're still 52 miles Stop out from one. Five. Down fire and Cannibal. Yeah, I've still got a ways to go, guys. Uh, it's just a thing, viewers. You never know how, like I said, I run this sometimes and the whole front squad of Raptors gets worn, wiped out and the next gets damaged. And sometimes you run it and you get a complete whatever this is. Cakewalk. It's just one of those things. How the missile right, was that day. I'm just going to orbit out here and not mm -hmm. get too close. Yeah, all of the sword flights now out of fuel, but not that that matters because my boys are in now. Don't get too close for the ships, guys. Some, their ele electro-optical defenses still work against Raptors. So what you're saying is stay above the clouds. I would, if I were you. You don't have to listen to me. But... It'd be radar stuff and it'd be visible stuff. Hmm. Whoa, well, yeah. Sort of. I mean, we still have our fuel tanks on. I do anyway. Huh. Right, one's poking his nose through the clouds and coming to get you. Literally hasn't seen you. Literally hasn't seen you. Friggin' noob. You noob. Uh, you know when I said he hasn't seen you? I lied. You lie a lot, Cap. I do, don't I? A thing's happening. Who's he shot at? What a stupid shot to take. Russians are playing so friggin' bad. Viewers, I've set them to max skill level. It's not me. I didn't do it. Shot a completely the wrong guy. That's a shame. It is, isn't it, Grump? Look at all our sarcasm we're doing today. Our lying and sarcasm, Grump. Mm-hmm. Lots of it. Mm-hmm. Could it hit the raptor? Could it hit the raptor? He hasn't seen it. We may have a raptor down, finally. And it's lost track. Friggin' unbelievable. Friggin' he didn't even try and dodge it. Man, I would no, not I'm want to be on the a, Russian side. <gasps> seeing a 77-1, still twitching. You found a twitcher. Raptor down! Yeah, he's going, but... He's got one. Finally! I just wanted to make sure they weren't set to a mortal or something weird. Fire's trying to find a guy in the middle of the friggin' cloud. We have one time stock fight going on here. Merged. Right, we better start fighting again. All of a sudden, the Russians have just become friggin' super Ivans. Another Raptor down. Told you, viewers, I told you, you just never know what's going to happen. Right, going to start hoping for the Americans again. Wow, Super Ivan's suddenly become amazing. Start fighting. Fire, please shoot that guy down. He's killing all of your friends. Three. I guess don't then. I got a missile out of What are you doing? It's not launching. Well, have you done the master run button? I guess not. Please press the master run button. Don't worry, Grump's going to kill already... him for you. I've already shot one down, so... Mm, I don't know then. Figure it out. Get, I'd get Tone and I'd lose it. Fox 3. Where is Grump? Oh, Grump. Yeah, good cover, Grump. Good cover. They've just woken up at the last second. They've shot two Raptors down. Uh, Grump swapping missiles. Grump's evaded somehow. Grump splash one. All done. Fox 2's in the air. Super Ivan evades. We're going for a dog fight here. Oh, I get the hit. Now four Raptors down. All right, let's not lose focus. There's only one Super Ivan in the air at the moment, who is Big Daddy Super Ivan. He's got a missile on him, though. Let's see. Yeah, it's not going to hit. Or is it Grump? Or is it... It did not. Uzi's firing at him. It did not. All right, we've lost enough guys now. I'm satisfied we can start killing again. All right, cool. Go on rampage mode. Doing what Ivan do best. He's on the bottom dodging missiles. Oh, he's down. Except right. for that one. Oh, Super Ivan's down. Um, let's come and get back to me and defend me and try not to run out of fuel. Four F-22s down, viewers, for 24 Ivans. I think that's, I can live with that. Right, how far? Yep, that's all of them. They physically can't carry any more aboard the cassettes of, and they would never actually fly with 24 anyway because they need support aircraft. They need anti-submarine uh, helicopters and stuff like that. But again, let's go for worst case scenario. I'm 20 miles out, guys. All flights can RTB. Yep. And, or at least RT return to the operating area for cap, provide cap cover. Mm -hmm. Got the bullseye. Wow, the Ivans fired 17 missiles in the end. 17. Where did that come from? They just went absolutely ballistic. I missed most of the action as usual, but 
Now my understanding is the submarine doesn't have to be surfaced to receive these signals viewers. We, if we use a certain frequency, as ever I stand to be corrected, if I use a certain frequency with my giant antenna uh, wire, I can actually penetrate the surface of the water to a certain extent. Right, it's called VLF frequencies, Cap. What's that, very low frequencies? Very low frequencies. The ground-based radars are, are anywhere between two to five miles long, the antennas are, for VLF. At one point they had ELF radar antennas, or not radar antennas, but transmitting antennas that were in excess of 20 to 50 miles long. That's a long piece of wire. Good lord. But they, but, and they only had those for probably 15 years or so, and then they decommissioned them after the improvements in VLF technology uh, allowed them to be able to contact ships underwater uh, with the VLF. The uh, ELF used to take 15 minutes to send three characters. Jesus Christ. The purpose of the ELF SMB. really became more of a doorbell, ring a doorbell, so the ship would receive the signal and then it would come up to a depth where it could receive a VLF. Uh, signal. I guess in this half the battle, right? It's great having these lovely submarines. And Britain, we've got I think four of our own nuclear submarines, maybe more. I forgot now. But if you can't get the message to them to fire, you know, it has to be a proper message. Then what good is it? I guess that's what today is all about, viewers. Right, guys, I'm gonna try and open my rear. Giggity. There it is. Right, loader guy. Unleash my giant aerial. Well, there goes the aerial viewers. You'll have to use your imagination. It's a lovely big long piece of wire. How does it not dangle in the sea? No idea. I guess if maybe it, it has a little drogue on the end. Right. Of it. If it had a drogue that kind of stretched it out, right? Why? Right, that's saw, it. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, I saw push. a 130 dragging a long wire. I don't think it was miles long. It might be several hundred feet long. They just had a big ball at the end of it. Right. Right. I'm in the zone now. I've got three minutes, and stopwatches are set. So the submarine that you're you're trying to transmit to is is trailing a wire like that themselves. So they're trying to cross wires, what you're trying to say. Never cross the wires. That's, well, you can cross wires, wires, you can't cross streams. Yeah, you can touch wires. Huh. Look at that carrier strike group. Just sitting there. Aren't they yeah. own the friggin' Pacific? You don't own the Pacific. Oh, look Giant at that. They owns have the a, Pacific. Have, I mean, wait. They have, a, they have a submarine in there. Look at that. Huh, how about that? The Moscow up front. And demonetized. Right. It's, it's a it's a World Heritage Site, don't you know that? Yeah, it's a coral reef. Guys, uh, the signal has been passed to the, um, God, Americans and their friggin' acronyms, SSBN. Something, something, ballistic, submarine. Anyway, whatever. Oh my God, I'm about to crash. That was doing? dangerous. That was dangerous. Um, he's going to launch his Trident missiles. Obviously, we're not going to simulate viewers, and they will do something to Moscow, and we're RTB. Uh, that's it, viewers. That's our kind of fund up simulation of a TARMO mission to uh, respond to a nuclear strike. I hope that was useful and Auf Wiedersehen!